Video games do many things well. Intimacy is not one of them. If you're looking for evidence that video games are the next great artistic medium, you won't find it here. If you want to cringe and turn yourself off of the naughty stuff forever, well, you're in the right place. And who says America is going to hell? The Grand Theft Auto series' relationship with adult content, particularly with regards to women, has been problematic since the very beginning. But for the most part, you can ignore the series' less savory elements if you so choose. Despite what critics claim, you don't have to run over prostitutes in your car, or visit the in-game strip clubs or hack your copy of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas to partake in the shoddy, half-finished, and controversial hot coffee minigame. If you want to get 100% in Grand Theft Auto V, however, you have to complete the sex tape. A mission in which the skeezy paparazzi hires Franklin to film a particularly private scene between starlet Poppy Mitchell and one of her co-stars. Not only does Grand Theft Auto V force you to watch a disinterested Poppy do the deed while she plays on her smartphone, but you'll do so through a camera lens. It's an intentionally gross scene that's kind of the series' MO, and it's made much worse by the fact that you're basically committing a digital crime. In the wake of the past few years' worth of celebrity photo leaks, the mission goes from skeevy to downright cringeworthy. Grand Theft Auto V is a great game, but sometimes it goes too far. Once you get that platinum trophy, you'll be happy that you won't have to play this quest ever again. Another illuminating experience, homie. Iron Bull isn't actually a bull, but he's named after one, looks like one, and is, um, built like one. And if your Inquisitor in Dragon Age Inquisition manages to strike up a romance with the Kunari mercenary, or just flirts with him enough that he offers you a personal bull ride, yes, seriously, he won't let you forget it. Before Iron Bull and your Inquisitor do the deed, he'll offer you a chance to back out, claiming that you don't know what you're in for. Iron Bull's love scenes are conveniently framed to cover his… uh, gifts. And if the size of the sensor bar is any indication, he's not all talk either. Other characters bring up Iron Ball's size too, asking, quote, How can you walk after a successful time doing the deed? During one scene, the Inquisitor's entire staff wanders into the room while Iron Ball is nude and they see everything, and are appropriately embarrassed and impressed at the same time. Iron Ball is a great character, and his romance scenes are some of the most interesting and funniest in the game. But come on, he's big, and we get it. So, I take it. Actually, She's the one who's been taking it. <laughs> At least Iron Bull is shameless no matter who he's sleeping with. If you choose not to pursue an Iron Bull romance, he'll hook up with the mage Dorian, and has no qualms telling you all about it. While on missions, he teases Dorian about losing his underwear in Iron Bull's bedroom. He tells you that Dorian sets things on fire when he gets aroused. Dorian isn't thrilled about his boyfriend's candor, and honestly, neither are we. Whatever you do in private is fine, Bull, but not everyone needs to hear about it. <sighs> That was good, Kadan. Eva, call me a Nazi again! In the world of Wolfenstein, fighting Nazis isn't just a full-time job; it's a family business. Oh my god! Oh my god! I got his brains in my mouth. Throughout the Wolfenstein reboot series, players catch William, BJ, Blasterwitz, and Anya in the act, and the fruits of their labor take center stage in the somewhat contentious Wolfenstein Youngblood. However, Anya and BJ aren't the only ones to let love bloom on the battlefield. In Wolfenstein The New Order, Blaskowitz relies on a small team of allies that grows in the sequel, The New Colossus. One of the sequel's new members, Seagrin Engel, is the daughter of the game's primary antagonist. Because Seagrin is connected with the Nazi war machines upper echelons by blood, only BJ trusts her at first. But eventually, other allies come around to Seagrin, most notably Bombate. He develops a relationship with Seagrin behind the scenes, which culminates in a cinematic that kicks off the New Orleans mission. Since the city is surrounded by an impenetrable wall on one side and a forest of undersea mines on the other, the characters decide to sneak in via mini-sub, but when they are about to embark, they notice a sub rocking to and fro. The course, of course, is Bombate and Seagrin doing the deed. They are too busy to notice everyone staring at them at first, but when they do, it's an awkward moment for everybody. To be fair, this love scene is short and uncomfortable by design, but it demonstrates that even though the game's characters make a booming business out of Nazi killing, they understand that the sins of the mother are not the sins of the daughter. I'm in love with you. Don't you understand that you damn idiot? Kratos is a manly man. 
You know he's a manly man because he kills things and bumps uglies. Lots and lots of bumps and uglies. The God of War series has rightly received a fair amount of criticism for its love scenes, which present women as trophies to be won, and honestly, ones that Kratos doesn't even have to fight too hard for and which boil intercourse down to a decidedly and sexy button-pushing minigame. But even among the franchise's over-the-top tributes to Kratos' virility, the orgy scene in God of War Ghost of Sparta stands out. As Kratos strides into Sparta, a bevy of attractive women lure him into a bedroom. He throws two of them onto the bed and gets to work. With every button pressed, another woman joins in the action. Before long, they're arriving in pairs. Eventually, players just mash the circle button as fast as they can, while the game's audio track devolves into moans and the sound of a creaking bed. Oh, and by the way, Ghost of Sparta launched on the PlayStation Portable. This is a game that was designed to be played in public. If you don't want the world to know that you're enjoying a virtual orgy, maybe give Ghost of Sparta a pass. Or for the love of Zeus, at least put on a pair of headphones. Sims don't make love, they make woohoo. See, when two Sims love each other very much, they'll retreat to the bedroom for some decidedly PG-13 related shenanigans. Like pretty much everything else in The Sims, their love scenes are cartoony and endearing. It's what happens afterwards that's so uncomfortable. For example, in The Sims 2, if woohoo leads to conception, your Sims don't even have time to roll over and light a cigarette before a special sound plays, signaling a baby's imminent arrival. Whether you're trying to get your Sims pregnant or not, it completely kills the mood. Things get worse too. If you don't conceive or just decide that woohoo is kind of fun, you can make them go at it again. And again. And again. And again. In fact, if you're not careful, your Sims can die of exhaustion after overexerting themselves in the bedroom, which isn't something that most people find all that sexy. Oh no, it finally happened. So good, he died. However, in The Sims, death isn't necessarily the end of the line. Ghosts in The Sims 3 can get pregnant too, and sometimes even give birth to adorable little ghost babies, just to bring everything full circle. DMC Devil May Cry was a huge departure from the franchise. The game sported a new developer and a new attitude. These changes were controversial for many fans, but plenty of critics agree that the meat of the game is stylishly on point. Plus, this black sheep of an entry gave audiences many firsts for the series, including a love scene that's uncomfortable by design. Since Dante is as friendly as a cactus in DMC, the duty of lovemaking falls to the game's main antagonist, Mundus. After Dante kills Mundus' succubus, an ugly, foul-mouthed monster who pukes up demonic soda ingredients, the game decides to catch up with Mundus while he's in the middle of violent passion. During the cutscene, Mundus makes love to his wife Lilith so violently that his lair shakes, and pictures of him rubbing elbows with politicians and stockbrokers bounce around the walls. But if that's not uncomfortable enough, Mundus' mood is ruined by a psychic telegram stating Dante killed the succubus. Players get to see the aftermath of Mundus' lovemaking. Lilith can't walk straight, and the act was so rough that her taut face has slipped off its foundations and warped considerably. Admittedly, the love scene is short, but it's meant to be uncomfortable and gets that message across without lingering on any explicit details. Then again, Lilith assumed that Mundus stopped because he was thinking about his succubus, which implies he might also have done the deed with her. That's a love scene nobody needs to see. GTA ripoff Ride to Hell Retribution is a very bad game. Heck, it would probably be the worst video game of all time if E.T. the Extraterrestrial for the Atari 2600 didn't already own that crown. Of course, unlike E.T., Ride to Hell shoehorns in positively horrendous love scenes. Now, for those who've never heard of Ride to Hell Retribution, the game revolves around Jake Conway, a Vietnam veteran turned biker who wages a one-man war on the motorcycle gang that killed his brother. Occasionally, Jake takes time out of his bloody warpath to save women from hasslers, and they reward him with, well... I love your dog tags. So sexy, baby. Each love scene is as jarring as they are sudden. Jake and these random women start bumping into each other with all the grace and emotion of Barbie dolls. The characters also make love with their clothes on, resulting in horrible clipping issues and are accompanied by bizarre music. Sometimes the characters even do the deed on furniture that Jake covered in biker blood not five seconds earlier. However, most egregious of all, these love scenes are just plain offensive. Women only exist in Ride to Hell Retribution to act as damsels in distress who happily bump uglies with the first man who rescues them. Not only is Ride to Hell Retribution a serious contender for the worst game of all time, it is also a contender for having the worst and most offensive love scenes in any video game, both for its execution and deplorable depiction of women. 
Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite things are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.